Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how you can get simple 2D movement input using the new import system inside of Unity. So I'm going to be doing this for a top-down 2D RPG style of game, and we're going to make the character move up, down, left, and right. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new project. And for this project, so that I have the extra libraries ahead of time in case I ever wanted to make it mobile compatible, I'll just select 2D mobile, but you could select 2D instead as well. So I'm going to go down to the project settings here, and then I'll just give it a name. So I will just call this 2D RPG and save it at wherever you want on your computer. So let's go ahead and create the project. So once we have our project loaded, the first thing I'm going to do is to go up to the window menu up here and choose package manager, and we're going to install a new package. So at the top where it says packages, go from in project to unity registry, and then we're going to be searching the word input. There should be one result here, input system. So as you can see here, this is going to overwrite the Unity defaults, the old input system. So this doesn't run side by side with the old system, but it disables the old system. So if you had any old code in your project that was using the old system, you need to update it for the new package. So that's why I'm just starting everything at the get go with the new input system. So I'm going to hit yes to that override the old system. And when Unity automatically reloads, we should see import system over here 1.2 with a check mark. So now we can go ahead and start building out our player game object. I'll go over to the project tab here. Let's create a folder where we can store our uh, player prefab. So I'm going to right click, do create folder. I'll do characters over here. I'll enter into here and then I'll do another folder specifically for player. So let's put that in there. Then I'm going to right click here, do create. And then we'll choose prefab and I'm going to call this player. So for player, I'm going to double click into it and then we can give our player some components. So the component that comes with the input system that we need each of our player objects to have is going to be a player input. So that's player input here, not player input manager. So player input is for a single player. And you'll see that there's some empty fields here. So for this input action asset, we need to create a set of actions that we can actually press when our game is running and then we'll respond to that in code. So let's create our actions and you can see we give this a file name and it'll have the extension dot input actions and it comes with its little editor for editing those actions so that when we use one of our devices to import uh, for an action like jump or fire uh, that we can later trigger that with the code. So I'm going to just save this import actions into characters player and I'll just call this player input dot input actions, we'll hit save, and we'll get the input action scheme to just pop up here, you can see that there are three default actions. So we have move here. And you can see that this action has many different ways of actually causing this to occur. So if you're on a keyboard, it would be WASD. But if you're on a joystick or game pad, I guess that would be like an Xbox controller, then you may have a stick that can move in 360 degrees. But either way you get this data, it's still going to be applying to the move action. So rather than setting up our code to respond to each type of controls individually, we just respond to the action, which is the move, look and fire. And of course, you can add custom actions if you need as well. So if you look at player input at the bottom, there is this property for behavior, which is basically how you communicate between the player input and your script. By default, this uses send messages, which means that in your custom script, you're going to need to create these little methods. And when one of those actions triggers like move, then you can just run the on move code in your script and get the import that is coming from the player input for that movement, which we're going to do. So let's use add component here. And I'll do a new script, we could call it player or player controller and hit create and add. And now let's go ahead and open this up. So as I mentioned, you can write these methods for any of these events you want to respond to in some way. So down here, we're going to put in void on move. And this is going to take a parameter and that is going to be the input value from the move event. So let's put that there. So this input value is going to be in the unity engine dot import system package. So you've got to add that to the namespace at the top there. And so this value for move is going to be a vector two moving in two directions. So up, down, and then left and right. And we can just assign that to a variable. So on move is going to run 
whenever our player import for that action changes, which means that the direction which we're trying to move the player is going to change. So up here at the top, I'll just declare a variable. So I'll call it private vector two move input, and we'll simply assign the move input to value dot get vector two, which is the type of value that we would expect during an on move. And then once we have that, we can run some kind of movement, which we should do on fixed update since that would be physics related. So I'm going to put in void physics update over here. I'll get rid of start and regular update for now. And now let's turn our player prefab into a physics object. I'm going to add the component down here for a rigid body 2D. So this is going to be kinematic. And then I also want to add a component for a collider. So we could make this a capsule or a box collider. I'll just go with box for right now and keep it really simple. So in order for any collisions to happen, which we're not really going to deal with in this video, uh, you would need some kind of collider in order to determine if one object is trying to bump into another object. But now that we have this rigid body 2D, we can get reference to it. So I'm going to put in private rigid body 2d i'll just call it rb here and then we'll do void start and whenever the script starts we want to get the rigid body that is attached to the game object so i'm going to do rb equals get component rigid body 2d here just like that and now that we have reference to that we can do rb dot move position so we'll take the current position of the rigid body, which would be rb.position, and then we'll add move input times move speed times time dot fixed delta time. Uh, since we're running in fixed update, it's going to run a fixed number of times per second. And for physics update, this should give us the exact amount of time between frames. So this is what we want there. So now lastly, we need a move speed variable and we can make it set up with public keywords so that we can customize that later on in the Unity Inspector. So I'll just call it uh, public float move speed equals 1F. Then you can just change this to whatever you want, depending on how fast you want your character to move. And so this will move our character around the screen depending on whatever direction the movement input is giving us from that player input. So our character should be able to technically move now, but we wouldn't really be able to see anything because there's no sprite. So I'm going to minimize some of these extra components. And let's create an art directory in the project. I'm going to right click, create folder. I'll call it art. I have some art assets from itch.io I can bring in here. So this is the Mystic Woods pack, and I will put these in. So we'll have a character we can use. So let's click on our prefab up here, add a component, sprite render. And let's find a sprite. So I'll click into the characters folder. Let's change the sprite mode on this sheet from single to multiple, because it's obviously multiple sprites. We'll go into sprite editor here, apply. And then I know that these are 48 by 48 pixel frames. So I'll do slice, change the type to grid, grid by cell size, type in 48x, 48y, slice, and apply. Okay, so now we'll have our individual frames and we'll just put the first frame for the player. So dragging player zero into the sprite kind of shrink our gizmos up here now we should be able to see our player object so let's go back out to the main sample scene and i will drag the prefab from characters players onto the scene I'll put it right about there obviously you can see that's quite tiny so let's shrink the camera size click on main camera i'll make this one and change the background to something that's not that default blue color i really don't like it much okay so i'm making it black size one should be good. So let's go ahead and hit play and just verify that everything is uh, working so far. So we have our little player there. Okay, and nothing's happening. So I must have just had a little bug somewhere. Let's go up into here. So I think, ah, okay, my mistake. This is supposed to be fixed update, not physics update. Okay, so now with that, let's go back in here, hit play again. I'm going to use WASD to move around the screen. So that is working correctly. If you want to uh, fix that pixel art, if you happen to be using pixel art, then uh, click on your sprite sheet and change the filter mode from bilinear to point. Okay, let's apply that and run it one more time and it should look a lot better. 
Pixar isn't meant to be having any anti-aliasing or anything like that. So that looks about right. Our character's moving around the screen. So just to show another example with the player import, you can see that you have all of these messages you can respond to, such as on fire, which by default is bound to left mouse click. So if we want to add in a uh, response method for that, then we can go back into our player script. And let's go down here and do void on fire. We're not going to need the value. We just need to know that the event has occurred. And then we'll do print shots fired. Okay, finish that up. So now let's watch the console, go ahead and hit play, and we'll be able to move around the screen and respond to that message as well. So we're moving around the screen and we're going to left click. And there we have our console log. So now that you know that your action has occurred, whether that is telling the player to jump or pressing the left mouse button down to fire a bullet or something, it becomes pretty easy to respond to that and then write the actual code for your player behaviors based off of that. So that's just a really quick rundown of how you can get started using the new import system inside of Unity. I hope this video made it easy to understand and that all of you got a little bit out of this video. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see all of you in my future Unity content.